America, the land of opportunity and dreams, where the poorest man can grow up to be the president, where our state governors make our license plates, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Let's really think about that former statement, land of the free. While the First Amendment of our Constitution promises that our government is banned from making any laws that silences our freedoms of speech, press, religion, and expression, there are times when even we the people forget that. Such is the case with underground comic artist Mike Diana, who learned firsthand how offending the wrong group of people can make your life a living hell. Mike grew up in New York and got into drawing at an early age, being inspired by horror comics like Eerie and Creepy, until his family eventually moved to Largo, Florida. Diana always had a unique way of looking at the world, using his art to show the ugly nature of humanity. While growing up in Florida, he would make his own little comics that he handed out to his friends, drawing on the side late at nights while working at his father's convenience store during the day. His comics were genuinely lewd and violent, claiming that that was his way of getting people to notice his work and spark conversations about the issues that he was bringing up in his pieces. He eventually got a job at a print shop where he would use their printer to publish his comics and distribute them independently nationwide. However, when he stopped working at the print shop, he got a job as a school janitor and would sneak into the computer labs to use the school's printers. It's bullied at this time that this is when he published his magnum opus, Boiled Angel, which at max had 300 subscribers all around the United States. Not bad for a guy working as a janitor. He soon lost that job, however, when a school employee had found some pages of his obscene comic that he had left there. Mike was on the rise, and his comic was getting more and more readers. He was on pace to become the next big shock cartoonist. However, in 1991, his life took a dramatic turn. A California law enforcement officer came across an issue of Boiled Angel, said that murders depicted in the comic were eerily similar to an unsolved murder case in Gainesville, Florida. The FBI showed up at Mike's mother's house and said that he was a suspect in the murder case. After DNA testing failed to prove Diana was the murderer, his information was still sent to the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office in Florida. Upon completing Burning Angel, Mike received letters from an individual who claimed to be a fellow artist and wanted copies of some of Mike's comics. Despite his suspicions, Mike sent copies out to the person who turned out to be a cop. Mike was charged with three counts of obscenity, which include publishing, distributing, and advertising. Diane got help from the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund, who provided him with a lawyer on their way to trial in 1994. Well, Mike's work falls under the First Amendment, right? His work wasn't too different from what you would find in horror comics at the time. Keep in mind, this is the safest stuff I could show you. However, in the 90s, an era about being edgy and attitude driven, there was still the morals of the Reagan era left over. During the trial, the prosecution called Diana's work obscene in a way that, while he drew violence in a gross manner, he showed sex in a positive light. The prosecution also brought up Diana being a suspect in the Gainesville murder trial, despite the fact the real killer had been proven guilty of it before the Diana trial even started. Continuing arguments against Diana included Mike being labeled as a potential serial killer due to the subject matter of his work, and compared him to Ted Bundy who was famous for blaming porn for his crimes. When it came time for the defense to speak, Mike spent three hours explaining his artistic meaning behind his work, but his pleads fell on deaf ears, with the judge even refusing him to submit his drawings from when he was a kid to show that he was always drawing shocking material. After a week-long trial, Diana was found guilty for three counts of obscenity, making him the first, and so far last, artist to ever be convicted for obscene artwork. Despite Mike's work clearly falling under the First Amendment, the court made it a goal to not only ruin his life, but the life of his family. Soon after the trial, the fire department of Largo, Florida ordered his family out of their home on a week's notice before they would bulldoze it over. Diane was then ordered to three years probation, $3,000 in fines, over 1,000 hours of community service, and was banned from contact with minors. Magazines at the time that reported on the trial were quick to point out that Diana's punishments were comparable to those of rapists and murderers. Fellow writers and artists like Neil Gaiman, Scott McCloud, and Peter David spoke out in Mike's defense, using words such as lunacy and one-sided to describe how the trial was handled. On top of all this, Mike was forced to see a psychiatrist, 
and he was forced to pay for it out of his own pocket. He believes that his psychiatrist overcharged him for their meetings and thinks she took advantage of him because she herself was offended by his work. Frustrated with all the unfairness he was receiving in Florida, Mike got permission to move back to New York, who were much more liberal when it came to his charges, making it easier for him to finish his community service and a better psychiatrist who charged him fairly and reported that he was perfectly normal. Things were starting to look better for Mike. However, he still had over $2,000 left in fines to pay off. So, he still has a warrant out for his arrest in the state of Florida. And on top of that, he is still unable to visit his family who live down there. Since then, Mike continues to paint and draw and has plans to self-publish a Boiled Angel trade book. The trial of Mike Diana has inspired a crowdfunded documentary about the court case, which is planned to be released in the near future. Now you know the whole story, time for me to give my opinions. You think this would be one of those cases where the trial could be interpreted, and you can pick a side, and nobody is right or wrong, it's just up to the viewer. But no, this trial was f***ing bullshit. Not only was this a violation of the human's First Amendment rights, the fact that they could look at a man's drawings, DRAWINGS, and say that he's not allowed to do those, when there were horror movies at the time doing the exact same stuff as complete and utter horse hockey. I also love how they said that Mike did a good job of making violence look bad, but he made sex look good. Uh, Mother Hubbards, we're all alive because of sex. I was created by sex, you were created by sex, your mothers, fathers, everybody. The hell do you mean sex isn't made to look good? Well, if it created stupid jackasses like you, yeah, I'd say it sucks too. Literally and figuratively. Now, it's true, Mike's comics did feature rape of minors, but that was only to show people that the Catholic priests were molesting kids. Oh, sure, we don't give a crap that real kids are being raped by our religious leaders, but the fact that it's drawn and a guy is calling attention to it? Now that's just going too far. But my favorite thing is the prosecutor comparing Mike to Ted Bundy. You're comparing a man who killed 30 plus people to an awkward kid who was just making his own cartoons? Where did you get your law degree? A Cracker Jack box? It's really crap like this that makes me think, where the hell are people's common sense at? I didn't mention this, but there was a point in the trial where the jury was asked what their definition of art is. One of the jurors said, needle point. You do realize there's more out there than sewing, right? Just goes to show, even when an artist can have artistic meaning behind his work, he can still be prosecuted for it. Well, thankfully, this is the only case in history of an artist being charged with obscenity, and it better damn well be the last. The fact that you can make such a law on something as objective as obscenity baffles me. What's offensive to one person ain't gonna be offensive to somebody else. Banning a guy from drawing because it might turn people into killers is like banning Budweiser because it could lead to drunk driving. People need to realize that it ain't art, nor the artist, that harms people. It's the stupid people that commit crimes who like to blame media for their actions, and the stupider people who believe them because they don't believe that some people are just messed up in the head. This was just a case of wrong place, wrong time, and Mike was unfortunate enough to get caught up in the whole thing. But hey... What do you expect from Florida, a state where you can shoot black people and get away with it as long as you say, I felt threatened, I was standing my ground? Florida, where murder is legal, but drawing it sure as hell ain't. Moral of the story, kids, don't live in Florida. Do you live in Florida? Run, get out now while you still can. Florida, you clearly ain't gonna respect our laws, so you don't deserve to be a part of America anymore. Bugs Bunny will take good care of you. Joking aside, this is the perfect example of an artist being censored and punished just because his work was offensive to a bunch of random people who his comic wasn't even meant for in the first place. I hope Mike can get his life back together and he'll be able to visit his family again. And better yet, all of his charges get dropped. It sucks to be compared to serial killers and rapists just because you were trying to do what you love and you weren't harming anybody in the first place. Artists should never be arrested for their work. That's not America. That's not even Mexico. Mike Diana is a hero going through what he went through, refusing to give up his passions even when the court was forcing him to. The day the American dream becomes a nightmare, you know that's when we need art the most, to show people just how hypocritical and evil human nature can be. 
And if we try to censor that and punish those who are trying to raise awareness of our flaws and sins, then that's when you know that the general public truly is afraid of the truth. Special thanks to Ian Anderson for giving me the idea for this video. Great suggestion, Ian. And as for you folks, what do you think of the Mike Diana trial? Do you think he deserved what he got? Or do you think that he was unfairly persecuted? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, stay loony, my friends. And fuck you, Florida.